Good morning to all of you. Uh, from my side, Happy New Year. I hope that the last few days of 2021 has been good to you. Um, yeah, it's our holiday service, but before we get into our song and the message, let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, once again grateful God to, to be here, Lord. Thank you for carrying us through 2020 and bringing us to this point in 2021, Father. As we uh, yeah, join together in song and as we hear from your word today, I pray, God, that you would just, yeah, just bless our time, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. He is love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of all. He is love endures forever. Him who among us does great wonder. He is love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of God. He is love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name for his promises are good. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name, his love reigns forevermore. To him who calls us from our sorrow, his love endures forever. Freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. Who by his wisdom made the heavens. Forever and spread the earth upon the sea. Give thanks, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name for his promises are good. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name, his love reigns forevermore. To him who calls us his disciples, love endures forever. Who sent his son to die on a tree, his love endures forever. Him who came low to call us higher. Forever. And by his truth has set us free. His love endures forever. Give thanks, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name for his promises are good. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sing praise to his name, his love reigns forevermore. Give Sing praise to the Lord for His love endures forever. Sing praise to His name for His promises are good. Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. Sing praise to His name, His love reigns forevermore. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed that song with us. Um, so, as I'm sure you're aware, we are currently busy with a sermon series entitled After the Storm. And this is in fact the fourth of a five-part series uh, with the title After the Storm. So, in the last three weeks, just as a recap for those of you who perhaps couldn't join us, we looked at 2020 uh, and the various curveballs that 2020 threw at us. I don't think any of us could have predicted what the year would have looked like. 
And in the first three parts, uh, uh, we learned uh, the, the need or the necessity for us to slow down and to rest. Um, yeah, life's busy. Um, I know we had sort of a, a lull in 2020, but then life quickly picked up. And then in the second class, we learned the need for us to slow down and to connect, to connect with God and to connect with one another. And then last week, uh, James reminded us through the scriptures that we also need to slow down and reflect to basically look back uh, before we look forward. Because I believe without looking back or reflecting, uh, the chances of growing is very, very slim. And this morning, what I want us to do is to look forward, to look forward to 2021 and to slow down and to plan. Amen. But before we get into the scriptures, uh, let us say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we are, we are grateful, God. We are grateful that um, no matter what the year is, Lord, we can turn to you, Father. We are grateful, God, that we can uh, always look back at life, but also look forward at life, uh, um, Father God, with you and with people around us, Father. I pray that this morning you will just use me as we look to the scriptures and as I share your word. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So here we are on the 10th of January, 2021. A year that just started 10 days ago. A year that's a blank slate or a white canvas for us to paint. And usually a new year means new plans, new purposes, uh, New Year's resolutions. Um, yeah, and new possibilities and new goals. Now, I know that many of you might be thinking to yourself, you know, after 2020's planning, um, you know, and the way that it turned out, is it necessary for us to plan? I'm sure many of you had lots of goals and lots of aspirations in the beginning of 2020. And as we've discovered later on in the year, our plans didn't quite work out the way we pictured it. Uh, and here we stand at the brink of a new year. Uh, again, as was mentioned in the previous uh, uh, lessons on this particular subject, we don't know what 2020 has in store. What we do know is it's not going to be your typical year. It's not going to be 2018 or 2019. Um, we are obviously still dealing with the COVID pandemic. So we don't know what 2021 has in store. And maybe 2020 threw you such a curveball that you are still struggling <laughs> through that and you're not even looking forward to 2021 or planning for 2021. Do we plan? That's the question. Now, you know, as I was thinking through this particular class, I asked myself, okay, so there's two possibilities here with regards to planning, slowing down to plan for 2021. And uh, option A for us is to Put my plans in place and trust God. It's to say, yes, my plans, think through my plans, make a note of my plans for 2021 and say, I'm going with it and I'm just going to trust God for that. And then option B is for me not to plan and to simply trust God. I know that seems a bit silly, but I'm sure many of you have planned in 2020 and things just didn't turn out the way you pictured it and you were almost forced uh, to trust God. So maybe that's uh, what you're thinking, uh, looking forward to 2021. Uh, again, so it's my plan. This is God's ways. Now, uh, the scriptures actually encourages us uh, to do both. Um, so if we look at the, the, the first scripture, which is Luke 14, 28, um, <clears throat> it says, For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. How can we build anything without a plan? How can you do alterations to your house or build a new house without an architectural plan or, or even a budget or some sort of plan to get you through that? So the scripture is uh, definitely encouraging us to plan. And then another scripture that uh, teaches us the same thing is Proverbs 21 verse 5. Here we are, here the scripture says, the plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. The scripture is encouraging us to plan, uh, because if we plan, it will lead to profit. But if we rush into things without planning, uh, we might end up in poverty. Amen. And again, just taking it back to the, to the building uh, uh, example. I mean, if you're not going to 
budget accordingly or plan accordingly, you might, and just rush into it, you might just find yourself not completing the project. And then on the other hand, as part of sort of option B, some of the scriptures encourage us uh, to sort of, you know, put aside our plans and, and just trust God, because at the end of the day, God eventually decides what's going to happen. And some of the scriptures uh, that sort of leans more towards that side is Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, which says, Many are the plans in the mind of man, but it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. In other words, we can plan, but at the end of the day, God's plan is the one that will stand. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, which teaches us that we need to trust in the Lord with all our hearts or your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. So don't lean on your own understanding, on your own plans, but instead trust in the Lord. So here we have these two extremes. And I'm sure you might have figured it out now. Neither A nor option B is actually the correct way. I think there's an option C necessary here. And it's basically to marry those two plans together. For us to do planning, but also to commit those plans to God. And that's what I want us to speak about uh, in this particular uh, lesson this morning. Amen. And what I want to encourage us to do is to use what I've sort of coined the 4P process, or the 4P process of planning. And the first step in that particular process is to pray. I, you know, we've got this amazing blessing in God. It's a massive blessing that we can turn to God at any time and anywhere. And me in particular, I mean, I, I, I don't think I use that resource enough uh, with regards to my planning. So as you're thinking through uh, possible plans for 2021, whether it be related to growing your marriage, whether it be related to growing your business or uh, growing yourself as an employee in a business, uh, growing your relationship with your kids, or growing your relationship with God as you think through where you want to end up in 2021 and as you plan ahead for that. I think the first place to start is to actually speak to God about it. There's a few scriptures that sort of uh, um, uh, um, nicely sums this up and actually explains it quite well. And the first one is we've just read Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. But if you continue to read verse 6, so verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But it continues in verse 6 to say, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. So there's nothing wrong with planning. In fact, the, other, uh, the scriptures teach us very clearly that we need to plan, but it's to acknowledge God in our plans, and He will make our paths straight. Another scripture verse um, that also ties in with that one, across references that one quite nicely, is Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, which says, Commit your plans to the Lord, and your plans will be established. So it's yes, do plan, but commit them to God. Pray over them. Hand them to God. Ask God for guidance through His Word. Uh, that's uh, the recommended first step if you are planning for 2021. And then the second P in this process, so after we've prayed and we committed it to God, is to use the resource we have available of advisors or people. You know, as I was thinking through um, this particular message, I was sort of thinking through people in the church and I realized, you know what, we have this amazing resource of advisors inside the church in almost any industry. <laughs> In, in healthcare, we've got doctors, we've got nurses in our church. Um, in construction, we've got architects, we've got engineers, we've got project managers, if you're looking at the construction industry. Um, if you look at, even in, in public service, I mean, people working for the city of Cape Town, people working for public works, uh, marketing, uh, business, entrepreneurs, you know, if you're starting a business or your business is going through some difficult times, there's a number of people who have and own their own businesses. And I mean, we have this amazing resource of people available to us inside the church uh, who can advise us and who can guide us. Um, and again, for me, it's like, you know, as I was thinking through this, I thought, I don't actually use that blessing that God has given to me and this resource that God has given to me enough. It's to make contact with us people. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's planning, praying, 
and in speaking to people about your plans. I don't know what your plans are. I mean, if you're looking at growing your business, maybe some advice would be pray through it and then speak to someone who has a business. Get some advice from them as you're planning towards 2021 and growing your business. And yeah, we've got this resource. And again, church, I want to encourage us to actually reach uh, or reach out to people uh, who can possibly advise us in all of these things. Now, there are a number of scriptures that actually um, sort of encourages us to seek advice. And I think Vardin has preached quite a few sermon series around uh, seeking advice. Uh, one of those scriptures um, is uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, which says, Plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. And again, the emphasis here is on many advisors. So yes, I mean, what, what I often do is when I've plan something, I go to my spouse and I ask her for advice, or I speak to my discipling partner, which is always a good uh, first start. But I want to encourage us to take these plans to as many advisors as possible, because the more advisors we have, the more likely the chance that our plans will succeed, which is exactly what this particular scripture says. So let's pray through our plan, and let's speak to people uh, about our plans and, and take the advice. Whatever advice they give us, if you've got to tweak that plan, if you've got to change the plan, let's do that. Amen. And then the third P in the 4P process uh, of planning, if you will, is the actual plan. So now we've committed it to God, we've got some advice, we've penned it down, and now we're starting to plan and the implementation of our plan. Um, yeah, again, I think all of us, we, we need to plan. We need to have goals. And there are a number of reasons why goals are important. I found two quotes which I think helps uh, to sort of make that more clear. And the first quote that I found is from Matt Mayberry. And he, he says, not having goals is an excellent recipe for average living. So if you're happy where you are and you're happy being average, then yeah, don't set yourself goals. I want to almost say, Matt, perhaps we should take this a step further and say not having goals might take you backwards. Not average living, but actually take you backwards. I mean, I think, I think financially, for example, if I'm not going to set myself financial goals and I'm just going to spend, 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 the chances are I won't be in a better or even the same financial situation in the new year. I'll find myself actually going backwards. So it's important for us to have goals and to set goals. Amen. And then the second quote is from Les Brown, who says, Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you land among the stars. I regularly encourage my boys, both my teen boys, uh, when they're studying and when they're preparing for the exams, I always say to them, aim for 100%. Because if you don't make 100%, you'll end up getting 90, 80, maybe 70%. Don't ever aim just to pass. Because if you miss that mark, you're going to fail. You know, and I tell the teens the same thing as well. So it's important for us to set our goals high. So that when we do fall short, at least we're landing on a, on a better place. Let me encourage us as a church to do that when we set our goals uh, for the new year. Let's not make it mundane goals, but let's set uh, some good goals where we shoot uh, for the moon. And then the final P in the 4P process <clears throat> is peace. Now, so you've made the plans, you've set them into action, and perhaps they don't work out the way that you planned it to, like many of our plans did in 2020. Let's be at peace with that. Let's be okay with that. Now, I know it's much easier said than done. Uh, and I know some plans are sort of, uh, you know, important plans of survival. And if they don't work out, we find ourselves in a sort of in a scuttle just to survive. But that's also okay. Remember, we've got God and we've got other people around us. Those amazing resources that we can lean on and talk to when plans don't work out the way they do. Um, I think it was a year or so ago, <clears throat> I actually did a lesson on planning with the teens. And I asked them the question, I actually put up this picture and I asked them, who's that? And I think 90% of them had no idea who this particular guy was. There was one or two that actually uh, recognized him. Uh, that is actually 
Colonel John Hannibal Smith, and he's, he's from the A-Team. Now, again, if you watch TVs in the 80s, uh, this is probably one of the biggest shows in South African uh, television, uh, John Hannibal Smith, and he was sort of the leader of a group called the A-Team, uh, which consisted of four members, um, and, and he used to come up with all these amazing plans for them. So he talked through the plans, and some of these plans were like out of this world. I mean, it's like infiltrate this military base and then face you the guy, you can speak to this lady and charm her while Murdoch, you do this and BA, you can knock this guy out and stuff. And, and amazingly, at the end of the episode, as you can imagine, it's just television, those plans always works out. And he'll end up with his cigar in his mouth and, he'll, and you might not know him, but you might know this quote. He'll say, I love it when a plan comes together. Now, unfortunately, we live in a real world where not all plans work the way we planned it. And things do come uh, short sometimes. <clears throat> and again, that's okay. Um, I think it was John Maxwell that wrote a book entitled Failing Forward. Um, I, don't have to, I don't think I have to explain anything more about the book. I mean, that's exactly what it's about. It's like when you fail, make sure that you're moving and growing uh, in that failing. Um, again, <clears throat> back to the example of my boys and their studying and their exams. They'll often come home to me with a test paper that I've got to sign. <laughs> and usually it's the tests that they didn't do too well in. So they'll come to me with a test paper and they'll say, Dad, I didn't do too well in my test. <clears throat> I need you to sign this particular test. Uh, and my first question to them, and they know it already, is did you go through that question paper? Did you actually go and look at the, at the answers? Did you go and discover where you made your mistakes? Because there's no point in writing the test if you don't go back and actually look at where you made the mistakes. So that next time, if that question is asked again, you'll be sure you can get, uh, get that particular mark right <clears throat> for that particular thing. So failing is part of life. Uh, it's also part of growth. Uh, and again, it's... it's, it's it's, it's for us to, to find that peace, obviously, uh, in God. And for us to be able to actually uh, agree with, uh, with Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, amongst other things. And he actually says, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. And again, not easy to think like that, but I want to encourage us as a church to, uh, to think like that as we... Uh, walk this walk and as we implement the plans uh, going forward into 2021. Amen. So to summarize church, I want to I wanna encourage us to use these amazing blessings that God has given us in Him and in people and in His Word to paint this canvas, this white canvas with bright colors. Let's set some goals. Let's make some plans. Let's uh, put, through, put forward some objectives that we want to achieve this year. And let's lay it before God, get advice on it, and let's aim high. It's a new year. We are new possibilities. And I want to encourage us to make the most of 2021. And let's plan for a great 2021. Amen. And that concludes the sermon part of the message today. But as we focus our hearts towards the communion, <clears throat> I also want to just remind us as a church that we are part of God's plan. Um, and again, Jesus and what he did on the cross is a part of God's plan. Uh, again, just, just thinking through the story of the Bible, um, yeah, God had a plan. His plan involved us and us helping to expand the garden. His plan involved Jesus, his son coming down and dying on the cross for us. And had he not implemented that plan, there'd be no hope for us. We'd not be a part of this amazing garden that God has, uh, <coughs> has, has us working in, uh, or at least serving in. So yeah, let's, let's remember that without Jesus, there'd be no hope for us. Uh, as if Jesus were not part of God's plan, um, yeah, I'm not sure where we would be. And with that in mind, let's say a prayer. Father, we are grateful, God. We're grateful that you have included us as part of your plan, Father. And as we plan for 2021, and as we lay these plans or commit these plans to you, Father, we ask you just to bless them, God. 
Um, and yeah, Lord, thank you so much for, for the blessing that we have in being able to approach you uh, with our plans, God, and that you're interested in our plans, God. Um, and yeah, Lord, I know that our plans tie into your great plan, Father, which is uh, basically for us to expand your garden to be icons, Lord, and help us to, even in our planning, to make that our goal for this particular year, Lord. I'm grateful for Jesus and what he did on the cross for us. Um, yeah, Lord, we're just so grateful. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The way.
That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the service with us this morning. Yep, join us again next week when uh, Mark Jaco will be doing the fifth and final part of this particular sermon series. God bless. Enjoy your Sunday. Amen. <laughs>